Welcome. Welcome to this video on physical geology. Today we will be introducing deformation and mountain building. In today's world there are two major mountain building belts. These are the Circum Pacific Belt and the Alpine Himalayan Belt. What is happening to these belts today has happened many times in the Earth's history. As we go through these two courses, you'll see what we mean. But first, a little bit about the basics. The first thing we need to understand is the term deformation. Deformation is just a general term that refers to changes in the shape or volume of rocks and layers of rocks within the earth. Here we see undisturbed layers. These layers have been deformed. In this chapter we will discuss how rock deformation occurs, but first we'll need to understand some terms. The first term is stress. Stress is when we apply force to something, such as pulling or pushing or twisting. And there are three of these stresses. First, there's compression. The walls that hold up the roof of your house are under compression. Here we have a column holding up a weight. And notice that the force of the weight is down and the force of the floor pushing up is here, pushing upward against one another. This is compression. Tension. If you climb a knotted rope in gym class, it is under tension. You're pulling the rope down this way, the roof is pulling the rope up this way. Shear is a little different in that the forces are acting parallel to one another, but in opposite directions. For example, when you tear a phone book in half to impress your girlfriend, you're implying shear. Now these are stresses. But when the object to which the stress is being applied responds with movement or shape change, this is stress. I did it again. This is strain. There are three types of strain. Strain is when it responds. Stress is when you apply it. Strain is when it responds. The first being elastic. When I apply stress to this ruler, If I don't get too carried away with it, when I relieve the stress, it'll go back to its original shape. This is elastic. The second is plastic. This ribbon, when I push on it, it will bend, but when I release the stress, it will stay bent. This is plastic. And the third being fracture. It will simply break. Now how the layers of the earth respond to these stresses will yield the different geologic structures we will discuss. However, first there's another term that we must master in order to be able to visualize the structures we'll be discussing. And this is strike and dip. Strike and dip. Remember from high school, if you had two planes, one plane intersecting another, and where these two intersected created a straight line. In this case, the pencil going into the paper. This is what we refer, this line is what we refer to as the strike at 90 degrees to it and going downhill is the dip. A little more explanation is in order. If I take this block here, and you can see how the layers are coming up out of the earth, and I place it against my horizontal plane, the notebook being the horizontal plane, and here are my layers coming up out of the horizontal plane. There we go. 
Can you see that this intersection between the horizontal plate and the layers is a straight line? This straight line is my strike. Notice which way the dip is going. Dip is always at 90 degrees to right angles to. This is a right angle, 90 degrees to the strike and going down inside the earth, dipping down inside the earth. If there are any questions about this, you should be able to refer to your textbook. Now this particular strike, and this is measured off of north, is striking about 20 degrees off of north. We brought the north line down like this, we would see that's roughly a 20 degree angle. Now the dip is at right angles to the strike and going downward into the earth. Here I've made several strikes and dips. Notice these two dips are away from one another and these two drips are close to one another. What is this trying to tell us? Below this I'll draw what might how the earth might look if we were able to cut away part of it and looked at it from the side. This is what we call an anticline. They're dipping away. If we can draw a capital letter A under it, that's anticline. That's how I remembered it when I was a student. And here is a syncline. They're dipping toward one another. Note, if you walk from the outside of, a syn of an anticline, you walk from younger to older rock. And if you walk from the outside of a syncline to the middle, you're walking uh, from older rock to younger rock. Here's another example of what we're talking about that will help you understand what we just said. Here's my anticline. Here's the surface. Here's my syncline. Notice this portion of the anticline has been weathered away. We see a good bit of this up in Appalachia where the synclines are actually at the tops of the hills. Here, if I walk from the edge to the middle, I'm walking from younger to older rock. And if I walk from the edge of the syncline to the center of the syncline, I'm walking from older to younger rock and then back into older rock. Now, folds can be upright, just like I've drawn these, where they're parallel. However, they may also be inclined. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Look at it from the side. This one's been inclined. This one is 20 degrees, 60 degrees. See here what we're talking about? Here's where they're parallel to one another. We see these both dipping at 20 degrees. Here, this one is dipping at 20, but this one is dipping at 50. This is inclined. And here we can see this one's actually been overturned. This one's gone past the vertical. This is a symbol we use for an overturn layer. And this one's dipping at 45 degrees. In this example, we can see this has been overturned. It's dipping at 75 degrees. Past, it's past the vertical. Now this is dipping at 20 degrees and so on. This is an overturn fold. Folds can also be recumbent or recline. Think of it as recline if it's incumbent. Recumbent. Recline fold. If there are any questions about this so far, stop the video and go back and look again. Folds may also be plunging into the earth. Notice that heretofore we've drawn them where the strikes were parallel. 
You'll find some examples, I'm sure, in, in the textbooks you're using. Here I'm using simple diagrams for clarity, plus there might be some copyright questions if I use someone else's drawings and photos. Here you can see the symbols we would place on a geologic map to depict plunging anticlines, and here's a plunging syncline. They're not parallel. My anticline is plunging thusly. My syncline symbols, dip, strikes and dips are not parallel. My syncline is plunging thusly. Note the strikes are not parallel. This tells us there must be plunging folds here, so we would have to draw this in to our maps. These symbols are for plunging anticlines, plunging synclines. The next thing I wish to discuss are domes and basins. A dome would be like the dome of a church. Here we have the dips all pointing outward and the rocks at the center of the dome are the oldest. These are good places to look for oil and natural gas, incidentally. Here we have a basin. It's like a bowl where all the dips are pointing inward. That concludes this video. Please join me in the next video where we will discuss faults. Thanks for watching.